Hey everybody, Jake here with TrendSpider to go over a few charts into tomorrow, especially ones that were tradable today. Um, I want to go over two different trades that I made. Um, this is not to, you know, talk about how much money I made, anything, anything like that. This is really to show you guys how you can use some of these features on TrendSpider to actually realistically get an edge in the market and see the market in a different perspective. So uh, Roku is the first one. There's a few different things in Roku that really made me very bullish yesterday that made me personally get into the trade. Um, and that was really the one breakout through this horizontal resistance. And uh, this becomes more important when we pull up the raindrops. But then the main thing that I was really paying attention to here was the fact that we had a ton of volume holding in this area from the earnings date on February 14th. And you could see just the volume really starting to create almost kind of like a, a point of just explosion. Whenever you've got the price kind of trading right at um, where the point of control is from a specific point in time, notice that I'm anchoring it from this point. Um, if I change this, let's say, to here, notice that the, uh, the point's going to be different. So I want to know from this particular point in time, when the status quo changed in the market, what is the distribution of shares of, uh, you know, of the range? So in this case, we can see most of those shares were holding in this area. So as supply started to dry up, demand started to outpace supply. You started to get a little peekaboo here is what I want to call this. And you'll notice something on the raindrop as well. You'll notice that there was a lot of volume above that resistance area um, that allows you to kind of see essentially, you know, that buyers were definitely in control here. So in this case, you can see here was our red horizontal resistance area. You can see how much volume was really supporting price above the zone um, and then you had a big volume gap above um, you know I don't think anything could have predicted that kind of move um, into today but what's interesting is the fact that the news really gapped us up right to this supply zone above so what you're able to see here is you're able to see that you know most of the volume that was traded uh, since this area at least um, you know when you're not comparing it to this area, most of the volume above here was traded right around 108. So naturally, that's where we found resistance. Notice that on the raindrop, we've got this big bar and we literally gapped up right to it, pulled back and then closed somewhere around here. So for me, I got out immediately simply because we were hitting this supply zone and you know, being up over 10% on a common stock trade um, into the next day, you know, you got to take that, um, at least at least for my style of trading. So, um, you know, that's one thing I want to mention. Another thing that I want to mention here is the fact that, you know, this is a really important thing to look at into the last 20 minutes of the day. So um, in this case for Roku, I was adding Roku into the end of the day because you could see how much volume was really starting to aggregate above this area. So, you know, into the beginning of the day, you're not going to see this raindrop formation because the day still has to materialize. You still have to have all of that price action to determine where this volume is going to be. But into the end of the day, you can start to see if buyers or sellers are in control. And clearly buyers were in control yesterday. And that's why I was confident holding my position into uh, today and it ended up working out. Another one is NVDA, NVIDIA, and uh, this is one that I also traded into the close yesterday. Um, initially, I entered at like 61, um, and then, uh, I don't know, I, I was up like a little bit, and I, I got out, uh, took like $75 in profit. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? So so as the day kind of continued, and buyers were con you know, clearly in control, and you can see this in the raindrop, you can see how much of that volume was at the top of the range yesterday. And also, you can see how much volume was holding, kind of like what we were just talking about um, with Roku. You've got this point of control here, and you kind of have this explosion to the upside once supply 
dries up. And so the main thing that I, you know, want to mention here is not only was this a technical setup, but if you look at a lot of the other plays like Amazon, Netflix, they literally looked identical to this a week ago. So if we pull up Amazon, you'll see that this setup was literally the same exact thing as NVIDIA um, last week. So you have to look for, especially in this market where it's still trying to become efficient, you have to look for those leaders and your laggards. In this case, Amazon was clearly a leader and still is, uh, especially hitting all-time highs here. And you'll see the same thing, right? We had this big area of volume holding. We had our move up with all of that volume. And then we had those four days of just really strong upside. We had the gap above that filled. And now, you know, we clearly broke through all-time highs, creating new ones today. So, you know, looking for these things and looking for patterns that have you know, are forming that may, you know, not have completely formed yet. Look at this, right? We've got this, you know, you could call this two things. You could call this inverse head and shoulders, or you could call it kind of a cup and handle, if you will. Uh, but look at CGC, right? We've got Tesla that formed a really strong cup and handle formation, and then you had this absolute explosion afterwards. And the one thing that I want to mention here is the fact that you've got the same setup, right? You've got a lot of that volume that was in this kind of cup part of the setup, and you've got an explosion. If you look at something like CGC right now, that is kind of in the process of doing exactly what Ch Tesla did a week ago. It's kind of forming that second part of the handle. You've got a lot of the volume forming here. Notice um, in this case, we've got uh, the anchored volume by, volume by price from this January 15th high, and you'll see the same thing. We're clearly in this demand zone. Supply is drying up. How do we know that supply is drying up? Because the price is able to move up here. And then we're kind of now trading right at this anchored view app right here from the gap up from earnings. So we'll have to see if this area does break, will this previous kind of uh, cup uh, kind of line above, um, you know, be an area of resistance or does the price absolutely continue to rip to the upside because you really don't have any volume in this area. Um, so, and that's kind of dark. Hold on, we'll make this a little less uh, solid. So you can see here, you barely have any volume holding here. This is like an air pocket in price. And then the next strong supply zone you have above would be in this uh, 17 to 18 zone, which uh, if you look at the anchored view app from this actual, um, I don't want to say it's not an all-time high, but the all-time high for this uh, year, you can see that this really is in line right with this supply zone here. So um, if we kind of extend that, notice that this is literally right at the top of that area. If we move this over, notice how well they're in confluence here. So um, we'll have to see if this uh, continues to work out, but this is something that you know is very relevant with those laggards. It doesn't, you know, Tesla and CGC have nothing to do with each other, but the market moves in tides. That was something that I was taught um, from one of my best friend's dads who's in the markets at an early age. He said, you know, the market moves in tides. And just because CGC and Tesla have nothing to do with each other doesn't mean that the market is moving in tides and money is flowing in different spots that there's a laggard. So um, this is something that's really important. Just something that I wanted to mention. Um, one of those setups that I wanted to mention as well is GE. If we're looking at kind of the price right at that main center point of control of volume, you'll see here that GE is one of those examples where you've just got one, this beautiful symmetrical triangle setup. And then on top of that, you've got literally, you know, this this apex that is about to break to the upside or the downside. And, you know, you would really have to have some bad news for the price to break down through this area because look at how many people are holding right here. This means if the price started to break down and we started to move, you know, down through this area, which could easily happen, you have to think that all of these people holding since this reversal, everyone's going to be holding at a loss. So people are going to have to start taking losses, essentially, 
um, for this to for this to add to the supply for it to drop. So um, this is definitely an interesting setup, kind of the same exact setup that we showed on some of those ones that already made a move this week. Um, but the market's unpredictable. The only thing that technical analysis and charts really help you do is get an idea of where the price may go, and that's both to the upside and the downside. So um, trading is all about risk management, realizing what's your upside risk, what or what's your upside potential, what's your downside risk, and then playing it from there. Everyone's going to have their own risk uh, strategy and risk tolerance, and that's why everybody's trading style is different. So hopefully this video helped and. Uh, we will probably do a couple more of these videos this week, so definitely stay tuned. Thanks so much for listening in.